Southern California, home to over 23 million people and the country's largest industrial complex, accounts for nearly half the national earthquake risk. The region is sliced by the famous San Andreas Fault, part of the boundary between two huge plates of the Earth's mobile crust. The plates steadily move past each other, but at the San Andreas Fault, they are locked together, and the movement occurs in sporadic shifts. This sudden slippage can rupture along the fault for hundreds of kilometers, generating tremendous earthquakes. The last major rupture on the northern San Andreas occurred in 1906, a magnitude 7.8 earthquake that destroyed the city of San Francisco. The middle section of the San Andreas has not ruptured in a large event since 1857, over 150 years ago. For the southernmost section, it's been over 300 years. The stresses built up by plate motion during these long intervals make large earthquakes on these fault sections all the more likely to recur. The plate boundary in Southern California is very complex with more than 300 faults. The San Andreas is only the largest and most active. The subsidiary faults pose additional dangers to the Los Angeles area, which was hit by strong earthquakes in 1933, 1971, and 1994. For example, the magnitude 6.7 Northridge earthquake in 1994 beneath the San Fernando Valley killed 57 people and caused over $40 billion in losses. To understand earthquakes and their effects, the Southern California Earthquake Center, known as SCEC, brings together over 500 academic and government researchers working at over 50 institutions worldwide. It is directed by Tom Jordan, a professor at the University of Southern California, where SCEC has its headquarters. We can't predict in any precise sense when large earthquakes will occur, but we do know which faults are most dangerous. We can predict how the ground will shake and what damage will occur if one of these suckers pops. Using the TerraGrid, a national network of supercomputers made possible by the National Science Foundation, SCEC scientists have created state-of-the-art numerical models of the complex dynamic processes that govern large earthquakes. Beginning in 2005, a team of geoscientists and computer scientists, led by Kim Olson of San Diego State University, conducted a landmark series of simulations at the San Diego Supercomputer Center, known as the TerraShake Project. In this TerraShake simulation of a magnitude 7.7 .7 earthquake, a rupture initiating at the southern tip of the San Andreas propagates northwestward along the fault. As the rupture progresses, wave energy is concentrated in the propagation direction, a phenomenon called the directivity effect. These ground motions are further amplified by the trapping of seismic energy in soft near-surface sediments, especially where thick layers of sediment have accumulated, such as the Los Angeles Basin. The TerraShake simulations show that these basin effects, when coupled with the directivity effect, funnel strong shaking into the very heart of Los Angeles. We obtained some very interesting results from uh, these uh, simulations that uh, scientifically were extremely surprising. These basins are basically channeling uh, and focusing energy along a very localized path and, and thereby uh, amplifying the ground motion. In the next stage of this research, the SCEC collaboration turned its attention to the details of the faulting process itself. When the stress at a point on a fault rises above its breaking strength, a rupture initiates and propagates along the fault in a complex pattern. The details of this pattern are governed by highly nonlinear, multi-scale interactions of matter and energy on the fault surface. Well, I'm uh, the um, coordinator of the project that we call DynaShake. This is an effort to model earthquakes encompassing the scale that controls the small-scale physics, carrying it all the way up to a large-scale ground motion. By including dynamic models of fault rupture, the SCEC team has been able to assess the effects of dynamic rupture complexity on ground motions, which decreased the shaking amplitudes in some regions and increased them in others. Many such dynamic rupture simulations have allowed SCEC scientists to quantify the source of intrinsic variability in seismic shaking. By using the National Science Foundation's largest supercomputers, SCEC teams are now pushing their simulations 
to more properly represent the high frequency shaking that causes the most damage to houses and other small buildings. This animation shows a broadband simulation of a magnitude 7.2 earthquake on an active fault beneath downtown Los Angeles. One of the programs that I'm involved in is referred to as CyberShake. In a nutshell, this program is using computer simulations to estimate what the ground shaking hazard is throughout Southern California for any possible earthquake that might occur in the future. It turns out we have almost 500,000 earthquake ruptures that we cycle through in our simulations. And we keep track of all those simulated ground motions. We analyze those, assign probabilities to the ruptures, and that allows us to develop a quantitative estimate of what the hazard of ground shaking is at a particular site uh, within some time frame. The exciting part about working with SCEC is that it pushes the envelope of computer science technologies. In the Pegasus project, we are now managing millions of tasks that SCEC wants to run on the cyber infrastructure resources in a way that's scalable and reliable. We're faced with a massive computational challenge in which we plan to generate between 400 terabytes and a petabyte of data on multiple NSF TerraGrid nodes We'll then have to move that data over the TerraGrid network to storage resources and analysis platforms at other locations within the NSF TerraGrid. These studies are beginning to have broad impacts. SCEC simulations of an even larger earthquake on the southern San Andreas are the basis for the Great Southern California Shakeout, a major emergency response exercise in November 2008 that also raises awareness of which areas are most vulnerable to experiencing strong ground motions. Knowing what the ground motion is, is the first key step in the design of a structure. The, the ground motion knowledge also gives information to emergency planners and after an earthquake how to react, how to distribute resources. And that's the kind of information that we try to get uh, through the simulations that we do of ground motion. While we cannot stop earthquakes from happening, we can reduce seismic risk through better understanding of earthquake processes and by preparing our communities. High performance computing is giving us new tools for this purpose.